What's going on everybody? It's Mike here from AX Garage. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 2022 Acura NSX Type S in this beautiful Long Beach Blue Pearl. Let's take a closer look at it. That's right guys, 2022 Acura NSX Type S, finally on our channel, super limited model, only 300 units for the North America market. And this car finished in this beautiful Long Beach Blue Pearl, one of my favorite color on the NC1 NSX. Super caliper along with the Orchid interior, definitely a very, very good spec. Now, this car does come with a lightweight carbon fiber package, ceramic bricks, carbon fiber front lip side skirt and also this incredible rear diffuser and don't forget also this deckless sporter back here and a carbon fiber roof now we got some upgrades that we have to do on this nsx now before we do that why don't we take it on the road and see how this car performs You know guys, I gotta say I'm very, very fortunate I'm able to get behind the wheel on this ultra limited 2022 NSX Type S with 600 horsepower between the engine and the hyper system, which is about 27 horsepower and more than the previous uh, NSX. Man, this car feels so much, so much different. Just like the first generation NSX, the second generation NSX still very driver focused and i feel directly connected to the car and with all this cool technology man it's just a plus now i've been driving this car on sport mode for quite a while now now i'm going to switch it up to sport plus my god the exhaust sound is just incredible in this car here it's not overwhelming it is just perfect personally i wish it has a little bit more drama and this is exactly what we'll be doing tonight in just a little bit we'll be arriving back to the shop and we're going to show you a few things what we will be doing and this is going to blow you guys mind and now we got a car in the shop john what are we doing that we're going to blow their mind so the owner of this car jonathan uh his previous 17 it was pretty well known. It was wrapped yellow and it had a whole list of SOS parts on it from eye lift, downpipes, exhaust, JB4, um, a whole bunch of stuff. Well, 99% of that stuff crosses over to this car. So we're getting ready to lower the car, put an eye lift, which is like a, uh, a, a lift kind of suspension mod so that if you hit an obstacle, you can raise the car to avoid it. And we're also going to be doing the JB4 tuner, which we had to send to Science of Speed to have a new flash put on it. Then we're going to install some Pride downpipes. Um, the old downpipes, they didn't make it with the car. We left them on the old car. So at this point, we have a set of Pride. They're um, 
a company we've worked with before. This is our first time using their downpipes. I've heard nothing but good stuff from them. So we're gonna go ahead and give them a shot. We have the Science of Speed valved exhaust for the car as well. We have a set of Euro headlights that John had modified to remove the, to make it look like the Type S, which this part is black. This lens is clear. So we have a set of those to put on as well. And this will be a highly modified Type S. Also a set of wheel, uh, wheel spacers. Now with all that that we're going to be doing, uh, obviously going to be pretty extensive. How are we going to start this? So um, we've worked on quite a few of these. No, no Type S's yet. This is brand new. This car's something we haven't done, but mechanically it's pretty much the same thing as the previous model. So what we're going to start by doing is removing the wheels, removing all of the bottom plates and trays under the car. We're going to remove the fender liners and I think we're going to start with the downpipes and exhaust first and then move on to the suspension. That eye lift incorporates a pump that goes here, two tanks in the back and a bunch of lines and hoses we have to run and tap into the car's CAN communication because the eye lift works on the cruise control XL and D cell to raise and lower the car. It's integrated into the system. So we're going to start with stripping the car down and you know this is going to be a few day process for us. It'll probably look like one night on your video but for us it's going to take a little bit of time so we're going to start by breaking it down so it's easy to work on and start taking everything apart. That's the first part. All right, so our first step is we're gonna remove these under trays. These are for downforce. Um, the flatter surface of the car creates a negative pressure under the car, creates more downforce. And that's why the bottom of the car is so flat. Under here is where we have stuff that travels from the front of the car to the back of the car, such as coolant lines, electrical components, AC stuff. All this different stuff is all under here. We're gonna remove these plates too because our air hoses are going to run through this area and in the back here this is the engine undercover a um, couple of interesting things about this is these are aero scoops that do draw air into different parts of the car to create downforce and cooling um, this in particular is the inlet for the brake duct over here you can see it travels into here through the actual chassis comes out of this port hits this diverter and shoots cool air into the backside of the brakes for cooling. So there's a lot of stuff under here that is functional um, as far as the arrow goes for cooling downforce and different stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. And this is another scoop for the brake cooling as well. So there's a lot of extra stuff in here that you don't see on regular cars. I think this is what makes the NSX special in the Honda Acura brand. So. We're gonna start by pulling all this off and there's probably about 10,000 bolts and screws on this, so let's get to it. These first couple covers removed, you get to see our front SHAW hybrid system. 
This is very similar to the RLX system, just more performance based. And it's two electric motors together and that gives you your front wheel drive of this car. You can also see the very involved cooling system on here. And anywhere you see these orange lines here, these are high voltage um, hybrid lines. So Honda lets everyone know and every company knows that this is not a coolant line and this will kill you if you get involved in it and hurt it. And also you get to see your cooler lines, your coolant lines. We have transmission lines here. We have hydraulic lines. Everything runs just like in the NA1s and NA2s through this port on the bottom side of the car. And that brings us right back to our engine cover. Let's go ahead and work on getting that bad boy off so we can show you more. And now the NSX looks super naked. Yeah, so we have all four of our fender liners off, front and rear bumper, all of our underplates, and now the car is prepped for the next step. Um, like I was saying previously, we there's no right or wrong way to do this process, but we figured we're gonna go ahead and deal with the exhaust back here first. You can see a little bit of it. We have a lot more shielding to remove so that you can see things better. We're gonna be replacing this exhaust with the Science of Speed one. We're also going to be replacing the downpipes that this attaches to. You can see the catalytic converter here. So the new downpipes are going to replace the primary catalytic converter with a high flow cat, and then it eliminates the secondary. It gives you a lot more turbo sound, some pops and crackles, and the exhaust is valved as well that we're going to put on there. We actually swap the actuator over. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be pretty happy with everything going on. The process starting from the back, then working on the suspension, I think is gonna be our best bet to keep things moving quickly. And um, the other good thing is, is we always strip the car down the day before because you want the exhaust to be ice cold when you go to remove the bolts because the bolts that go from the turbo to the downpipe, they like to lock up. If there's any heat in it, they're a pinch style bolt. So that pinch will bite into the bolt and you may 
have a snap. Now there are three studs on your downpipe. We don't really care if those snap because we're gonna be replacing that with a new downpipe. But there's one on the turbo and if that one goes, you could be in a pretty tricky situation. So other than that, that's what we have. And um, tomorrow we're gonna come back and do the rest. It'll just look like a few seconds for you though. And we got everything laid out here between the factory exhaust and the aftermarket one. John, tell us more. All right, so we'll start with the exhaust here. This is the factory exhaust, and um, it's pretty interesting because if you take a look at it, this is the muffler system. So it comes into here, and you can see that when this valve closes, it bypasses into this muffler underneath here. So it'll come in from the turbo, hit here and when this valve is closed, it diverts everything through the muffler. When the valve opens, it's straight pipe exhaust with no, no muffler in it, just the catalytic converters. So that's in, in my opinion, you don't gain a huge amount of performance from an exhaust. But as you can see, you're running it through the muffler. On this setup, this is Science of Speed, one of their very early model uh, valved exhaust systems and I believe he said he had 48 hours of hand fabrication time into this. It's stainless steel with the carbon fiber tips on it. 
and these are where the actuators mount. But as you can see over here, when it goes to the, the valving opens and it runs through here, there's not a muffler. In their later models of this, they have a small muffler that's fitted to there because the car sounds pretty quiet, or I should say pretty similar open and closed. You can see the piping diameter is a little smaller, so it does make it somewhat quieter, but not super noticeable. So their newer ones have a muffler integrated into that. But also you can see the piping diameter is quite different between the two. Um, they're all badged with signs of speeds insignia there. Now over to the catalytic converters. These are the factory units here. They run um, catalytic converters that are very good and efficient at reducing noxious gases that are bad for the environment. Um, so you have one here and then you have a secondary. What they do with these, the, um, they have a really nice cell catalytic converter. Instead of it being this big unit here, if this is really just the only catalytic converter on here, it comes right into here. And now you can see the flex pipe is set up pretty similar and it eliminates the secondary cat. These flow almost as good as a straight pipe setup. Very little difference in actual CFM flow when they did bench tests on science of speed ones. These are pride. They are not science of speed, but it's a very similar situation. Science of speed, their, um, their setup utilizes these heat shield covers with brackets to fit over here. What Pry did is they double sleeve this with an air gap set up to keep the heat inside. And we will cr transfer over these front covers onto these brackets. It's all pretty straightforward. You can see where the differences are between the stock units and this. And also everything is a much lighter. Not that this amount of weight savings is really gonna do a whole lot for a car this heavy but the performance and sound and look of this, it really completes the entire thing. And we're also gonna be transferring over heat shields onto this portion of the SOS exhaust as well. So we gotta start by swapping over actuators, heat shields, then we can put everything back in the car. Oh, we've done some weird moves in the past. This is what it's called brother love. Right One time here. we were doing something like this and we were this close, our faces were like this close to each other and he goes, this is how you know we're good friends. <laughs> So we have the downpipe fitted into its place. We have all the bolts and nuts started and um, everything lined up good. We have our gasket in the right place. So now we're gonna start tightening the four bolts that tighten this down onto the turbo. Then we'll add our heat shields in. We got one on the top, one on the bottom. We also have a brace that goes from the cylinder head to the turbo. It's a support so the manifold doesn't crack. That goes on after the shield. And then this is our O2 sensor hole right here. We'll get that put in. And then we got a couple more brackets back here I got to show you about. It's pretty easy from here.
now we're on to the exhaust. We got the downpipes all mounted up, all the shields installed. So now on this exhaust, the Science of Speed comes with place to, places to mount these heat shields. This heat shield and also this other one that goes underneath it here. We also need to remove the actuators and install them on there. It comes with some hardware. Um, it should be pretty simple. We'll probably start by removing the actuators first and then the shields. I don't know. Let's do the shields first. Let's see how it goes. Should be no problem. Okay, what do I say, giant moment of truth? Let's send it. Okay, here we go. Mm. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the, uh, the valve. Give it a little bit. I like it. I like Sounds it. good. Guys, there you have it. The exhaust is a success. And we're gonna wrap this video up. You guys like what you see. Make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel and also follow us on our social media pages, both Facebook and Instagram. 
and Akrahana Classic. My name is Mike, behalf of Ace Garage. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next week.